Welcome to Life is Beautiful. I'm Anthony. Today, I want to talk about something a little bit different than what we normally talk about on this channel, but still kind of related, I guess. I want to talk about sake bombs. The sake bomb is, without a doubt, one of the most popular, like, beer bomb shot drinks that have ever existed. You can find them in almost every sushi bar, some of your nicer Chinese restaurants, hibachi grills, uh, pretty much anywhere that has chopsticks, you can usually find a sake bomb. There's just something so fun about the sake bomb, you know, just like the actual act of it and all the rituals that go into it, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. But first, let's get into uh, a little bit what the sake bomb actually is, and then we'll talk a little bit about its history. So to distill it down to its core essence, a sake bomb is essentially nothing more than a glass of beer, a shot of sake, fixed on top of a pair of chopsticks. You then combine the two drinks, the shot into the beer glass, and you chug it, and that's a sake bomb. And I think that's kind of one of the reasons why the sake bomb gets looked down on so much, because uh, I, I wish, if I took a sake bomb for every time I was reading articles while researching this, and they used the phrase, you wouldn't do a Chardonnay bomb, or you wouldn't do a Rosé bomb, First off, you don't know me. And secondly, I would just be blacked out. But I do kind of get where these like bloggers and writers are coming from because you wouldn't oftentimes take uh, any other beverage that is like highly praised or has some type of historical or social significance to it and then just like slam it <laughs> into a cheap glass of beer. You know what I mean? It is, it is a little strange. So that begs the question, if sake is so highly revered and it does have uh, a lot of respect on its name, how did it wind up in the sake bomb? How did the sake bomb come to be, this, this lowly frat boy drink? Well, it does have a bit of a weird history. Well, the real simple fact of the matter is that nobody really knows where the sake bomb came from, what its history was, the origin point. But uh, I, I saw that there's a ton of theories, a ton of rumors, and I kind of distilled them down to the most two popular ones that I came across. And uh, they both either take place in America or Japan. The first theory starts off with American soldiers that were stationed in Japan following World War II. Uh, so in this theory, they were either at a bar in Japan and they were wanting to do like boiler makers or depth charges or some other type of uh, beer bomb drop that they would have been familiar with back home. But those spirits that they would have used weren't available. So they went with the uh, most alcoholic option, which was sake. The second theory revolves around Japanese businessmen who were visiting America and they saw Americans doing some type of beer bomb drop and they kind of wanted to do it themselves. They had a bottle of sake on hand and they created the sake bomb. Either way, every single theory that I came across essentially revolves around the concept of that it was invented in America or Japan and it involved American or Japanese citizens and it had something to do with the OG like Boilermakers or depth charges and it was reinvented with sake. The good news for you sake fans who are repulsed by the idea of the sake bomb, uh, it is, it should be, <laughs> utilizing a very, very cheap bottom bottom tier sake. Uh, you should never really go for anything of high quality or high value since it is essentially just going to be dropped into a glass of beer. The reason it should be a cheaper sake is because uh, when beer is a much more intense flavor than sake, sake has uh, oftentimes very delicate, uh, nuanced flavors and aromas, and you don't want that being completely washed out in your glass of cheap beer. However, there are ways you can elevate your sake bomb experience. First off, the thing you could do to kind of take it to that next level is try experimenting with different types of beer. If you do want to kind of balance them out a little bit more, I do recommend you trying like a, uh, a Japanese rice lager, like a Kirin or a Sahi. Uh, they're so dry, they're so clean that the sake does show up a little bit more. You do get a little more of its nuance, but it's still largely washed out by the beer flavor. So if you are looking to take it to that next level, you do have kind of two pathways you can take. You can go down the beer pathway and you can just experiment with different beer styles and you can uh, kind of like ramp up the overall drinking experience with some IPAs, some Kolsch's, Hefeweizen's with sake, something that's 
uh, the sake at that point is really just going to kind of bump up the ABV of your concoction. It's mostly going to get washed out, but sometimes you do get some interesting and fun like intermingling uh, between the concoction. The second option you can do is go with your flavored sakis. Uh, there's so many different types. There's melon, plum, lime, hibiscus, whatever, and that can kind of add a fun little twist. Or the third secret hidden path is to do both options. You can take a IPA and you can pair it with uh, some type of fruity or citrusy sake and have some really interesting uh, sake notes that will play well with the hops. You could do something interesting like a hibiscus sake mixed with a Kolsch that's going to play off of the already venous nature of a Kolsch, kind of reinforce it with the sake flavor and then kind of add some more floral touches to it. And I really enjoy enjoy like pear and plum sakis in a Hefeweizen. It is a great combination. But I will re-emphasize one last time. You, d you shouldn't use really good sakis. Go for your cheaper sakis. Even the flavored ones are oftentimes nowhere near as expensive or highly revered or regarded as, you know, actual like good quality, like, like sushi grade sake. So regardless of whatever option, combination, pairing you decide to go with, the best part about sake bombs is drinking them. And I don't necessarily mean the act of actually like drinking and catching your buzz or whatever. I mean the rituals, the, 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 the pre-show to the actual sake bomb experience. So the first thing you need to do is set up your sake bomb. Uh, as I mentioned, it is essentially just a glass of beer. Want to have it nice and bubbly. You're going to have your chopstick set up as like your balancing beam. And then you're going to have your shot of sake on top. I love that presentation. I love this, this experience because most bomb shots, especially bomb beer shots are literally just take a glass of beer, drop it in chug. There's a little, uh, a little show to this, a, a little, uh, je ne sais quoi. Once you are set up, you're going to start slowly banging your hands on the table. You got to enter a little bit of a trance. You got to collectively and rhythmically slam your hands onto the table, gaining more and more momentum and force with every pass and second as you chant in unison, Saki, 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 or count in Japanese, Ichi, ni, san. until the shot falls through the chopsticks and plunges into the suds below and everyone yells, yeah. before hoisting the glass, chugging the whole thing in one go. Mission failed. We'll go next time. And the ritual is complete. So I hope you learned a little something about the sake bomb. <laughs> I hope you feel a little bit more educated. But honestly, it is a pretty interesting drink. Uh, I like that it is kind of wrapped in mystery. I like that it allows you to combine two very interesting beverages uh, that wouldn't necessarily seem like they go along together, right? So even though it might not be the most highly revered drink, uh, it is incredibly fun. So if you've never had a sake bomb in the past, I highly encourage you to try them. Uh, I mean, go to any hibachi grill, go to any sushi restaurant. I I would be surprised if they don't have sake bombs on the menu. And if you have had sake bombs and you've done a little experimentation yourself, please let me know what was your favorite combination? What was your favorite pairing? So thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. Remember, there is a story in every bottle and that life is brutal. I guess I can drink this. Cheers.